Just, just say no L, no L, no L. Hi, I'm Art Fine. Okay, I'm Art Fine. It's uh, Art Fine's poker party coming in from San Francisco. That was Peter Kalkinen. First time seen in these parts in a while. Great guitarist, and we'll see him a little later too. So thank you very much, Peter. And I got a couple special guests, real special guests. Uh, first one on my far left is uh, Mr. Wavy Gravy. Wavy. Just say no at all. That's no Christmas, well. Christmas. Oh. That's, that's psychedelic Santa Claus. Hey, Joe, uh, Christmas is over, man. It is? Yeah. Well, in that case, how about CC Top on acid? Real good, man. No, I'm under here. <laughs> I'm under here. I want to have some fun. Proper hat here. Let's get casual. Is, is that your formal attire? That's what you normally wear? Yeah. 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 Okay, it's Wavy Gravy, also known as Hugh Romney, a legendary figure around here and around the United States. Uh, we'll talk to more, some more to you in just a second. Next to me, I got Barry Melton. Barry, welcome to the show. Oh, I right, thank you, Art. You look like you're ready to deal those cards. Why don't you, can you put out for a night baseball? Night baseball? Yeah. Woo! Put out seven down. Night baseball? Put seven down. Yeah, we'll put this thing a little closer. Season, yeah. right? All right, so uh, Barry Melton's a former country gentleman the Fisher. Actually, he is the fish, is that correct? Isn't that what you're... Did you shuffle these? Yeah, yeah, shuffle. When you were in Country Joe, you, there was Country Joe, and there was you. And that was Country Joe and the Fish at first, is that correct? That's true. And you were a fish before the band was formed? You were, that was your name? Uh, no, not exactly. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I've been a fish ever since <laughs> I got old enough to uh, develop that kind of name. Okay, well, uh, Barry, we were with the original... Uh, mid 60s band Country Jellyfish, which then broke up sometime around 69 or 70, though you continue to play with Country Joe McDonald here and there, correct? Uh, yeah, from time to time. This is including, true. including the movie Zachariah. You got seven out there? Well, you see, you keep asking me these questions and expect me to count at the same time. I don't know if I'm that bright. Seven. Scratch well, your back. Yeah. Seven. Well, actually, okay. you're a lawyer now, right? Uh, it, well, yeah, I am. Why, are you in trouble? Actually, I will be soon. Do you do, do, you do uh, bankruptcies? Bankruptcies? Uh, we could arrange something. Got any money? Do you, well, you, you mostly represent very wealthy clients. You're working with General Motors and stuff like that now? Oh, well, we? actually, there was a big call out from Exxon uh, for criminal defense attorneys, which is what I do, uh, you know, based on the oil spill. And I was trying to... They actually did a big call? Oh, yeah, no, I'm not kidding you at all. Huh. You know, they were charged with high crimes yeah. up there. Yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you, you, did you heed the call? Did you come in and uh, try? Well, they're to... oily clients, kind of. Uh... All right, well, anyways, well, first, we'll get back to that in a second. First, Ray, you got to roll one card because this is a uh, yeah. meet the guy next One goes up. One goes up. Oh, wait a uh, second. We don't have chips. Fours and, you're right. Wait, wait, Fours and nines wait, are wild. Wait, take a roll. Yeah, yeah. 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 Buffalo. Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh, we have you roll one, and uh, roll the, one? Person, uh, the person, the <laughs> person... Do I bet first? No, you roll a card, roll, roll a card. Yeah. All right. And we have to beat that. Ah, ha, ha. It's a king, it's, it's pretty good. It's space, All right, but as long as we got the camera yeah. on you, I assume, tell us a little about what you're doing right now. I know that you ran for mayor, or no, no city council. No, 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 not for mayor. I could have been elected. No, I just ran for city council in my district where I couldn't be elected. <laughs> Why not? Because the woman uh, who got elected has been there for 16 years, and uh, it's all the wealthy people in Berkeley, and they uh, like to keep it that way. That's too bad. I read about you in New York Times. Oh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. We said, just say no's, uh -huh. and gave out noses to everybody. We suggested <laughs> a rubber chicken in every pothole, a lot of things like that. Uh -huh. But I am curious. I mean, Barry, you've whetted my interest. I know when I became Wavy Gravy, but did you? When did you become the fish? I've never had the courage to ask you this before. I've known you all these years, and I just thought, well, he's the fish, but... Well, it's okay. the chip's okay, Jerry. Don't, don't worry about the chip. The chip's okay. It was actually in 1965. You mean the chips are... They're you know, not too bad. Don't valuable. worry about the chip! That's, 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 that's right. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, the rest of the story. Yeah. Well, I became the fish uh, as a young uh, revolutionary in uh, Berkeley, as a matter of fact. Oh. Berkeley, California. You know, I go back to Berkeley's history. Uh -huh. um, I actually uh, heard you talking uh, on another show about Al Cooper, and, uh, and uh, Al Cooper was always my guest in Berkeley when he first came there. Uh -huh. That's when he was a struggling young artist with a band called the Blues Project, uh -huh. um, and all the royalties for We Wear Short Shorts ran out. Uh -huh. 
Mm -hmm. uh, he used to stay at my house. Now that he already had this diamond ring yeah. under his belt. Then, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he just walked in and called you a fish one day? No, no, actually, it comes from my revolutionary period. You, you see, there's a quote from Chairman Mao's Little Red Book that the fish moves through water uh, as the revolutionary does uh, through the peasantry. Or it's the other way around. The revolutionary moves through the peasantry as the fish moves through water. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, the Black Panther Party made all of their money selling little red books. They came over to San Francisco, bought them for a dime apiece, and sold them on the streets in Berkeley for two bucks apiece, and that's the way they made all the money. Revolutionary capitalism. Yeah. Right? The only little red book I know is by Manfred Mann, and then Love covered it. Remember that? Wow. little red book. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So 65, huh? 65? 65, 65 yeah. yeah. I didn't become Wavy Gravy till 69, after, after the, the you-know-what... Uh, was over and we went to Texas for the Texas Pop Festival and we had a, a free stage and uh, I was laying down on the free stage it was before my second spinal fusion and uh, uh, they, they had about 1100 kunga drummers on the stage and uh, uh, I looked down first I saw this great clown from the cowboy rodeo being sold a joint by a long hair for six dollars so I asked for all the marijuana on the stage and I looked around, and the cougar drummers started to pick it up, and we got this uh, uh, chant going, oh, they don't want to stay, oh, they don't. And I looked down, there's this monstrous pile of reaper. And good I idea. Says, okay, yeah. if people say you roll good, come on up. These guys are stripped to the waist, rolling joints, one-handed, and toss them out the audience. This big cloud of smoke comes up over Texas, and this disembodied voice comes, says, B.B. King is here with his boss. Oh, so he's going to play for free, clear the stage. And I looked around, there's nobody there but me. And I was getting up slow, and I felt this arm on my shoulder. I looked up, and there was B.B. King. He looked up, you wavy gravy? Yes, sir. <laughs> he says, well, wavy gravy, we can work around you. I don't know why he called me that. He leaned me up he against this him? amplifier, B. B. King and Johnny Winter came out of the wings, and they played till dawn. Yeah. Maybe he meant something else. Well, wavy gravy? Wavy gravy, yeah. I met him when they put him in the Wall of Fame in L.A., and he says, I sort of remember. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> uh, you know, I first saw Wavy when he was a young Los Angeles comedian in 1963. I saw him playing the Astro, and he had a, he had a, like a, a great physique and a blow dried haircut. Is that right? He was like an LA comedian kind of guy. Yeah, Lenny Bruce was my manager in those days. Is that right? So under the name Hugh Romney. Yeah. Was yeah. there any albums? Or any... Third Stream Humor on World Pacific. Is that right? A what? rare disc. Uh, what about were you interacting with? Something about Lord Buckley? Well, Jim Dixon it was the guy who, who did the album for World Pacific, and he did the birds and, uh, you know, all that stuff. Uh -huh. and, uh, he also recorded all of Lord Buckley. Well, where are you from, originally? And originally, I was uh, born in uh, East Greenbush, New York. Uh -huh. So when did... When did <laughs> He talks about You're lying! You were born in Greenbush? What? You too? <laughs> no. I was just thinking how apropos. Uh, did, but as, a, as a young comedian, did you, were you go, did you go right to L.A. where he saw you at the Astro? Were you operating out of L.A. then? Well, it was, it was very surreal. I was, I, I, I was a, a teenage beatnik, you know. I used to read my poems in the coffee houses and stuff. And, uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, people would line up four deep around the block to look at people. It was kind of a geek show kind of a situation. <laughs> well, then you it know, was. That, uh, but as, as my poems became uh, 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 more intense, I, they became shorter and shorter. And I would improvise between poems as long as I possibly could before I had to read another poem. So this guy saw me do this. He skipped the poems talk about the weird stuff, and he started mailing me around the country. And next thing you know, I was opening for uh, <coughs> him and John Coltrane and Thelonious Monk and all them guys. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. And that's, this is like the late 50s or the early 60s? Late 50s, early 60s, both. So you were on that boho uh, beatnik circuit? Both. I was on the cusp between uh, hippie and beatnik. I remember when Bobby Dylan first came in to the... Uh, the Gaslight, he asked me if he could go on and perform. The Gaslight, where is that? On MacDougall Street in uh -huh. New York, that's where I used to do it at. And uh, I asked him, I said, what's your name, Kitty told me. I grabbed the mic, I said, he was wearing uh, a sign on his guitar that said, this machine kills fascists. Mm -hmm. And I later discovered he was also wearing Woody Guthrie's underwear at yeah. that time. He said, wow. that's Woody Guthrie uh, uh, sign. You know, I just grabbed the, yeah, 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 I just grabbed the mic, I said, here he is, a legend in his lifetime. What did you say your name was again? <laughs> Cool. Well, actually, speaking of like uh, hitchhiking cross country and, and being an itinerant folk singer, were you doing that? You told me you mentioned 
coming into Chicago and playing a play. Oh, yeah, no, post, I, did, I did that, actually. Country Joe Speaking of Woody Guthrie, uh, um, I grew up uh, next door neighbors with uh, Woody Guthrie's family. Was that right? Uh, in New York, uh, York until the age of eight. And so I went to school with, uh, with I went to kindergarten in first grade with Arlo. Was that right? Wow. Uh, and, uh, and Jody, who I still see now, Jody lives in Berkeley, you know. <laughs> but, but I mean, all friends of the family. And I went to March Guthrie's uh, dance school with his wife. She had a, a tap dance academy in, in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. And I first learned tap dancing in uh, March Guthrie's uh, tap dancing school. Wow. Uh, so. Went, so you're a hoofer bit, a fish, hoofing yeah. fish. Then I then I went to LA as a young man, but. Uh, I mean, you but, moved there on your own, or your family moved there. My family. Uh, moved there, and I, um, I, I guess I began sort of uh, going around the country uh, in 1963. And, uh, With a guitar, I guess. Music. Yeah, oh yeah, very definitely. Uh, played all the bag houses in New York, well, basket houses, uh -huh. basket houses in New York and Greenwich Village. Uh huh. Yeah. And, uh, well, we know, we all know about the Country Joe and the Fish stuff. Here's a couple of very melted indie. Independent records from. Oh, that's my British rock star. Right? Wait, wait, you were a British rock star? Oh yeah, I was a British rock star for when about is, a year. When is that? Oh, I'll flip by his nineteen seventy something or other. And there's another one. Yeah, that's taken right here on Sixth Street in San Francisco in front of the Liberal Gun Liberal Loan. What year? What year was this? Uh, nineteen eighty or so. Oh, eighty. That recently. Yeah. And then this one. Uh, that's uh, oh, mid seventies somewhere. Yeah. Who did that? That's what a pretty cover. So you had all kinds of independent records out there, you know, major label records out after the Fish experience. And I also know you worked producing or some something with uh, Robert Hunter and uh, somebody else. Oh uh, yeah, well, Wavy and I both hang out with old Bob. And some oh, he's other a good man. Dead related stuff too, right? Indeed, indeed, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, wait. A, well, excuse me. I want to beat your king. That's a four. Oh, you an extra card. Oh, it is extra a, card. Oh, an extra card. Where's the cards? Where you really? Oh, that's yeah. right. Because it's wild. Extra card and a four. Four is wild. You mean he's just beat me? No, it's not wild. Oh, yeah, threes and nines are wild. Oh, threes and nines are wild. You get card. an extra card and a four. Eight and right. four. Still haven't beaten the okay. king. Deuce. Still haven't beaten the king. Six. Still haven't beaten the king. It's gonna be a short game. Oh, boy. Fours that beats king. Give me that extra card. Yeah. All right. Fours. Pair four, four. Pair four right. beats you. Okay. But I'm not going to bet on you. You can try and beat the fours if you wish. Uh, oh, there's a wild card already. There's two wild cards. Oh, my God. We'll call them aces. We'll call them aces. All right, <laughs> so, so you're ahead. Uh, Wavy, I heard you mention before before we got on that there's a, a line of Wavy Gravy coming out. Well, uh, that's a scoop. Oh, okay. We're, we're talking, uh, you, you're talking the, the Ben and Jerry stuff, or you're talking about my album's been out a year. No, I think that's what you're I don't know. You talk there's a Ben and Jerry's just, flavor. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna they're gonna do a wavy gravy, and all the uh, proceeds from that will go to my kids' camp uh, called uh, Camp Winter Rainbow, which is a circus and performing arts camp that I've uh, run for the last 16 years. Is that right? Is it here in the Berkeley area? Well, it's about three and a half hours north on a, the Hog Farm Ranch. Uh, I'm part of the, the hog farm. collective expanded that exists? family. I mean, uh, I yeah, yeah. Well, after a fashion, we do. Yeah, we have a little hippie hyenas port in Berkeley, and. Uh, uh, 500 acres spread up north where we have our, our businesses. We have 150 sheep and yeah. uh, we're deep into sheep and uh, we got uh, uh, Are there got, tours? Uh, if I go to, if I, uh, teepee and awning what? making business called Intense. <laughs> where, where, where is this located? What town? Is <laughs> Laytonville. We Layton? put Laytonville on Laytonville. We put them on the map. There. So if our, if our readers or watchers are cruising through Laytonville, yeah, they'll see nobody's business. They can stop in. Uh, that's the name of your place. Nobody's business. That's our little outlet in Laytonville. For, outlet uh, for sheep or for what? For uh, for tie-dyed bizarreness. Uh huh. You know, and various hippie hoo has Noses. You could you could cop a nose there probably. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So I mean, the hog farm has continued. I mean, is that something? Twenty-five your, years now. Is that yeah. something of your device? I mean, I know of it at Woodstock. I'm a clog in the hog. Is that, I know Woodstock, that, is that that little yellow bird? Yeah, that is that yellow bird. Well, you remember Charlie Brown? I, I know. All those good grief, that's gotten me so many miles. Let me tell you, I couldn't exist without good grief. I know the hog farm situation was at Woodstock passing out food, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, you're not what you eat, you are what you don't poop. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we actually, I had a great announcement where I, I said, uh, Good morning, all we have in mind is breakfast in bed for 400,000. Which is when we introduced hippies to granola. We really tried to give everybody breakfast in bed, and we we poured this granola into Dixie cups uh -huh. and took it around to people in their sleeping bags. And they, what is this? It looks like gravel. Uh -huh. 
Save but, your Dixie cups. Yes. Yeah. But I, okay. Look, looking, looking back on this now, I don't understand. The sloth still rides again. Looking back on this from a more adult perspective, I'm trying to understand who were the hog farmer? Why did they have the money to give the food out to people? Or did people they give didn't them have the food? any money? No, no, we didn't have any money. We made yeah. a deal. Yeah. Uh, with uh, the producers that they wanted us to be there to do some kind of. Uh, life support. We thought we were going in to do fire trails in a free kitchen. I knew we were going <laughs> to. Uh, and we got off the aircraft and uh, the world press is there telling us we're the, the security. I said, my God. Uh, I said to the guy, well, uh, uh, do you feel secure? The guy says, yeah. I said, see, it's working already. He said, well, what are you going to use for crowd control? And I said, cream pies and seltzer bottles. And they all wrote it down. You know, so we did the free kitchen. We had arranged for that. We we fed only ten thousand people a meal. I mean, it was a, it was minuscule in the amount of people that were there, but it was enough to cover everybody that didn't have any food. And your role in this was as a what? As a as a psychedelic relic. As a, uh, I was the hog farmer. Yeah. But, but, but how I how I got ended up on the mic was uh, uh, because of Chip Monk. I'm surprised you would get to him, Mike, because you're sort of a shy guy. I, can, I can't see how that would happen. How, how did it happen? Well, Chip knew me from the gas line. Uh, oops, you lost oops, I lost my mic. Uh -huh. Chipmunk, wonderful name. Chipmunk uh, uh, is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, there's no person named Chip. Well, he's, he was the Rolling Stones uh, road manager for years and years. He's the guy who invented concert lighting. I mean, he should be given that credit because it just... It was just Andy Panda before Chip Monk, mm -hmm. and Chip Monk made you know bands change color, and he built the stage at Woodstock. He was really responsible for a lot of that so kind of stuff. He invited you up on the and stage. he had the he had the great voice like a melted Hershey bar being poured in your ear, mm -hmm. and uh, sure he did. He 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 saw me. Uh, I was working at the, uh, uh, the 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 tent to talk down people that were on uh, on uh, odd uh, uh, psychotropic uh, substance, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I came uh, on stage to, to warn some people about various uh, 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 flavors of this stuff that, that weren't appropriate. Yeah. And it was he gave me the mic and then he wouldn't let me go. He just handed me more and more announcements. And uh, then every time I would go near the mic, he'd hand me a bunch of announcements. And I got that's how I got to do it. So was the Hog Farm present at other festivals like that? Or yeah, is that the yeah one? we did them all for a while. Uh, uh, not that, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of them were really lame. And we ended up... Uh, 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 supporting uh, Cretan Pig Swine promoters that uh, are setting up announcing the Rolling Stones in Palm Beach and we end up in a in a swamp in the Okie Finoki uh, <laughs> uh, but we wanted to protect uh, uh, the right of people to come together in large numbers and boogie which Nixon gradually eroded and destroyed mm -hmm. so now you can't get uh, uh, a festival of seats. If, if your lights depend on they, it. You know, I mean, you know, the, the rock and roll changed when they got numbered seats hmm. and tickets that told you where to sit. You see, there was an era there where they just said, go in. You're on your own. Right? And then they got numbered seats. You can, you can regulate large crowds of people if you have numbered seats hmm. because you can say, let me see your ticket stuff. <laughs> Have you been searched on the way into a concert lately? Uh, that was a big thing in the 70s, I remember, getting frisked. But I, I guess Welcome I to the Bay Area. I haven't been... <laughs> yeah, the, as a matter of fact, it was the Fillmore where I got frisked. Too, they searched you on the way to see baseball games. Yeah, we do, we do. Is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't very know, I know baseball game in a while. I want to make sure you're not drinking. Because hmm. they cut off the beer here after the seventh inning, which is really, you know hurt my appreciation of it all <laughs> intensely and, and, and lowers the chances of me staying. Oh, speaking of baseball. Speaking of baseball, yeah, uh, my yeah. Right. Keep, the, keep the pair of aces. <laughs> keep going. That's nothing. Seven and so, kings. Jack, Jack and a king and a seven. That stinks. Couple jacks. Two jacks. That's going somewhere. That won't be two aces. No, not yet. They're right there. Six and a jack and a seven and a jack and a king and a seven. Sevens and jacks. Bears. Beats Sorry. Yeah, all right, uh, all right, so two we'll pairs and nothing. One. Mine are natural. In a second. Yours are unnatural. I got these really lousy cards. Two fours and another four. Give me another card. Ooh. And that's fourth Ooh, four. Four fours. Ooh. All right, so I'm winning. Four, four. Uh, I forgot to say, uh, you're playing also sporadically in the dinosaurs, or regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I play regularly in the dinosaurs, but the dinosaurs play sporadically. Mm -hmm. I see. When they play, you're there. Yeah. When they play, I'm there. So who's the lineup right now? Right now, it's um, uh, Spencer Dryden on drums. And the Jefferson Airplane. Uh, Peter Alvin on bass. The big brother. Merle Saunders on keyboard. He was a 
associate of the Grateful Dead, right? Uh, vaguely, and um, I mean, it's the thing with Jerry and um, and Papa John place. Creech on fiddle. And he's a new addition. Yeah, he replaced John Cipollini. He passed away uh, about a year and a half. Ago. Papa John's always there, and uh, he's a regular member. Yeah, not sharp. He's a singer. <laughs> yeah, he's a fiddle player, basically. Fiddle yeah. Player. I mean, you know, anybody's a singer, right? <laughs> yeah, I heard Wavy singing before the show. He's pretty good. Well, Wavy can really sing, actually, because he has soul. Fill it. <laughs> uh, what, Wavy, what, uh, between the Hog Farm thing and, and the early 60s in the uh, in L.A. <coughs> stand-up, what was going on? I mean, you were just evolving into a weirdo? Between who and when? For you. Between the early 60s and the late 60s. Oh, no, no. The, from the early 60s. Well, I don't know. I, I uh... What happened? Wavy, what happened? Ah! And since, like, don't tell, Wavy. As your lawyer, I advise you not to tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wavy, what happened? I mean, what happened? Well, I just, I just gave it all away and went to live with the Hopi Indians. Is that right? And uh, and came back and uh, I, I was with the committee in oh, really? San Francisco. It's an improvisational group, and and it was then that I had my vision to give it away hmm. and go to live with the Hopi Indians because uh, the California was going to fall in the ocean. Oh. Everybody that, that's out here has gone through that at least once. Yeah, right? You're on the freeway and the cars are whizzing by and you're calling up your friends saying, "You got to leave. I know it's four in the morning. Get out of plane." <laughs> yeah, Icarus. And we got there, and the Hopi said we were early, you know, so I came back to L.A. <laughs> like a century? How are And uh, started uh, 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 selling uh, uh, Can of Bliss in, uh, in decorator bags with moon soldiers inside. Can of Bliss? What was that? Uh, the, uh, the herb. Yeah. The herb. To the stars. I sold a key to the Beatles once. Say Did right. I say that on television? <laughs> <laughs> Key? The keys to the highway. Is this in their yeah. San Francisco appearance? Uh, was that here? Or was that? Uh, no, that was down. That was down south. That yeah. was down south. That's where the hog farm started. Uh, in fact, uh, what it was is one day uh, uh, my wife and I were getting ready to do our first uh, 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 public uh, uh, event in Los Angeles. It was called the Lord Richard Buckley Memorial Sunset, and it was pouring rain, and uh, people kept calling saying, "What are you going to do?" And I don't. I said, "Why? What's?" Wait and see how it is the next day. Wait, there was a memorial to Lord Buckley? Yeah, 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 on Moonfire Mountain, which is like uh, Sugarloaf in Rio, except it's in Topanga. Uh -huh. Louis Beach Marvin III, the ex-heir uh, to Green Stamps, owned the place and lent it to me for the event. Okay, so uh, I come down in the morning in, in my house on Lennon Grove Street, and there's uh, 50 people in Deglo clothes cooking eggs. Uh -huh. And the pranksters have just arrived to do their little tour, and with the right. Grateful Dead to do the Can You Pass the Acid Test. And there was Tiny Tim in his bathrobe, and he was, Oh, Mr. Cassidy came and beat on my door at four in the morning. He wanted grass, and he was standing a whole lawn full of this and that, and the floor is ringing. <laughs> so finally I said, uh, call off the sunset, and we'll go to the Unitarian Church in the Valley. They're doing this show called... Uh, can you pass the acid test? Oh, that was the one. So that was that one, right? And then we did more and more, yeah, and and one thing led to another, and then the next thing you know, we're posing for the cover of Life magazine, and Ken Babb stole the bus. So my wife and I moved to a two-bedroom cabin in Sunland, California. Suddenly had forty house guests. Ooh, uh -huh. Sunland next and, to Tahunga. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. And the landlord came by and said, "You can't have." Uh, 40 people in a two-room cabin, and you're evicted. And an hour later, a neighbor came by and said, well, old Saul up on the mountain had a stroke. They need somebody to slop them hogs. Uh -huh. And so we were given a oh, mountaintop so rent-free if we would take care of 50, 60 hogs. Oh, so yeah. there really was a story behind that. See? Excuse me. This is not something, <laughs> this is not, this is not something I normally ask people. Can I see your teeth a little better? Do you have, can you get a close-up on that mouth? Oh, no, I didn't. That's not what I meant. Oh. <laughs> Uh, well, can, can, can yeah. I take a, those are, well, yeah, this is a rainbow bridge. This is a rainbow bridge? Uh, I came by this bridge. First of all, you came by it? You bought yeah, it yeah. secondhand? No, no. No, no. Neil Cassidy. Yeah. Neil Cassidy took me to this dentist <laughs> uh, named Dick Smith, who also did the light shows for the acid test. <laughs> and I knew if he worked on Neil's teeth, he had to have quick hands. Uh -huh. So he heard me say in this turbulent 60s that the only flag I would ever salute was a rainbow, so he stuck this with him when he out here. Maybe we'll come back into an insert on that later, right. but uh, that's pretty terrific. No, but it's an inlay. Nobody for president campaign, only the teeth were there. 
teeth. Not my teeth. These no, would be no, well no, wound no, up nobody plastic teeth because nobody, nobody is really nobody. When, when was a no, I, I just that. work for nobody. Yeah. Well, you see, we started out in '68. We got, ran a pig for president. It was the first female black and white candidate. Yeah. And uh, then we ran a rock for president, a roll for vice president, uh -huh. so you could always eat the vice president. And then I spaced the rock out in a taxi cab in New York, going to a recording session. And uh, then we got into nobody, as, as nobody uh, is perfect. Nobody keeps all campaign so promises. Cool. Yeah. I work for nobody because I think nobody should have that much power. Okay. And for the speeches, we have nobody arrive in an open convertible, and then nobody would speak, and we use the clicking plastic. Wow, that sounds speech. great. So there we are. So all right, uh, we got to go, but oh, it's Barry, right. I, I was telling you before the show, I didn't know if we, I'd be able to draw him out, but. I think I did it. I think I got him to speak, and I'm very proud of that. I know he's basically an introverted guy. Yeah, so thanks a lot, Wavy Gravy. Thanks a lot, Barry Mel, and uh, Peter Kalkin. Peter, Peter Kalkin is all, all revved up and ready to go over there on an outro. So thank you, Peter. Thank you, Wavy. Thank you, Barry. And good night. Mm -hmm.